Hello and welcome to this fourth webinar in the series within FlexiSoft. This webinar is regarding the configuration of a FlexiLink project. So my name is Ian Keatley-Smith. I'm one of three functional safety engineers within SICK UK and we also have a number of sales guys who are trained up to functional safety technician level. So rest assured, when you contact SICK, you'll hopefully talk to somebody who has got some experience and knowledge of machinery safety. The other functional safety engineers at SICK are Seb Strutt and Martin Kidman. So the agenda for today's webinar is first of all to understand what is FlexiLink. The next thing we're going to look at is configuring a FlexiLink project within FlexiSoft Designer. And with that, we'll be looking at selecting the hardware. We'll be looking at assigning the inputs and the outputs. We'll then design some safety logic. And finally, we'll look at reporting. We'll also have a look to see where you can get more information on FlexiLink. And we'll also uh, review the seminars which have already got taken place and the future webinars that we'll be running. So first of all, what is FlexiLink? So FlexiLink is basically a network solution for connecting multiple FlexiSofts together. So in the image on the left, you can see that we have four FlexiSoft um, configurations there. So the first one shows you a CPU, a diagnostic card, which is gray, and then you've got two uh, safe IO cards there and we're connecting using this orange cable. So what we have is uh, you can have up to four controllers connected in this way. And what we do is we have safe communication between the controllers and we use uh, what's called EFI, which stands for Enhanced Function Interface. So it allows us to safely send uh, 52 bits of data between each of the FlexiSoft controllers and if you're not aware of uh, what a bit is, just think of a bit as a, as a light switch. So uh, 52 light switches we can switch on and off. So within FlexiSoft Designer, uh, within the FlexiSoft range, there are actually four CPUs that are available to you. We have CPU 0, 1, 2 and 3. However, FlexiLink will only work on CPUs 1, 2 and 3. And that's because the CPUs 1, 2 and 3 have the ability to do this FA communication, this enhanced function interface. So all you have is a twisted pair wire uh, going between each of the controllers. The CPU 0 doesn't have that functionality, hence why it's not uh, available to offer the feature. The maximum distance that we can go is 100 meters, and that is from the first CPU to the last CPU. So it does have a limitation there. However, one of the major advantages of FlexiLink is that you have one project file. So you'll see later on when we develop the system is you have one project file for all of it. So it means that you can plug into any of the FlexiSoft controllers and download the configuration to the others, which is a major advantage because um, otherwise you'd have to plug into each controller and program it separately. So that's, this is a really good feature of FlexiLink. So moving on how you configure a system in FlexiSoft Designer. First we have to understand the safety requirements. So there has to be a bit of planning done beforehand of how you're going to communicate information between each of the CPUs. So imagine we've got four machines all connected in series here or one machine leads into the next. Each of the machines has its own local e-stop. Machine 1 has got a light curtain. Machine 2 and 3 have got safety switches attached to them. And machine 4 has got a light curtain. And how the system works is we have to reset from one location on machine 1. Now, I'd like to highlight here, this is just an example. Um, in reality, you may not want to do this because when you're resetting um, from one location here, you have to have sight of all areas of the four machines. So in reality, this probably isn't a, a practical solution, but it's just to show you 
how you transfer bits backwards and forwards between the CPUs. So there's the requirement, is if an e-stop is pressed on any machine, then all the machines will stop and you can reset only from machine one and with the outputs um, for the light curtain and the safety switches, they will just stop the local machine. So hopefully that's understandable. Um, what I'll do is I'll just move that over to the left hand side now and we'll start to build the hardware. So there's the requirement over on the left just to remind us. Here is the FlexiSoft Designer software and in the past you would have clicked on create a new project but underneath there you'll see there's the option to create a new FlexiLink project. So we click on that and the software opens up and you can see there you've got your four possible CPUs. So we're going to go into station A. So station A represents machine 1, station B represents machine 2, C machine 3 and D machine 4. So there's your CPU options. You can see the CPU 0 isn't available when you develop a FlexiLink project. So we're going to go for CPU 1 with an XTIO. We're then going to add on there a dual channel e-stop. And you can see the lightning bolts there. So we're using test pulses on inputs 1 and 2. We're then going to choose a reset push button. Double click on that and it'll take the next allocation, which is input 3. And we also need to select a light curtain, so we're going to use a DTEC 4, and that's going on to input 5 and 6. I need some local outputs, so I click on output types, and there I'm going to select a motor, and that will populate Q1 when I double click, and a lamp which goes on to Q2. So that's me done my hardware configuration for machine 1. We now go to machine 2, and we do the same. So we have a CPU 1 and we have an XTIO and attached onto that XTIO we are going to fit a dual channel e-stop again double click it populates input 1 and 2 and you can see X1 and X2 there showing you the test pulses are coming out of there there's my safety gate attached onto input 3 and 4 and then again I'll put a motor onto Q1 and a lamp onto Q2. We'll then move on to machine 3 and do a complete repeat of this. Unfortunately, even though machine 2 and machine 3 are identical with regards to the hardware, the, um, it's not possible to copy and paste from one station configuration into another station configuration at the moment. So we have to go through this. So um, there is my dual channel e-stop on machine 3. And then I'll select my dual channel switch and attach that onto input 3 and 4. So the final station, after we've just put the local um, motor and lamp onto machine 3, we will then go and go to station D, representing machine 4. and on this one we've got an uh, emergency stop and a light curtain. Just taking a little while for the software to catch up. You need to be patient so uh, the XTIO will become available now. There we go. So we click on that and we go to elements and a dual channel e-stop will be added on there and a light curtain. And as with the other stations, we're going to add a motor and a lamp onto the outputs. Okay, so now that that is done, um, we'll just go to the overview. And in there, you can see the hardware uh, for each of the stations. So station A, um, if you've got very good eyesight, you'll see that on the XTIO module on station A, we've got a dual channel e-stop, a reset switch, and we've also got a light curtain. So it's a true representation there. Um, if one machine had many more slices onto it, because um, we can have up to 12 slices attached onto the side of the CPU, you would see the hardware uh, looking different in each one. So that's the overview. So that's that's the simplest thing. That's that's we've put the hardware together. We've told the FlexiSoft what are connected to it. Now we have to go in and we have to start developing the logic that works between them. 
So we have to develop the logic individually for each station. So I'll go to station A and I will bring in my local E stop here. And there's my light curtain. And then I also have got the, the reset push button. On the outputs, there's my motor. I'll just shake that over to the right hand side there. And there's my lamp. We go to function blocks. And here we're going to choose a, a reset block. So if I double click on the block, I'm going to change the I.O. settings here. The number of inputs I'm going to change to 6. And I'll explain this uh, as, we, as we go through. So the reset push button connects to the reset input and the reset block. The light curtain we're going to attach to release 4. So if you put release 1 to release 5 there. And it's just like an AND gate. So um, they all, all those inputs have to be healthy and then reset to get the motor to run. So the reset signal here is a local reset, but we also need to send that reset signal to the other stations. So unfortunately that's not going to fit in there, so I'm just going to highlight this and move it down a bit so that I can grab this routing block. These blocks were mentioned in the previous webinar, uh, which is the understanding function blocks, which you can watch a recording of uh, after this if you're not familiar with the blocks. So I go to outputs here, and there's my CPU. And what I'm going to do, I've already got a tag name called reset. I'm going to send an output from our FlexiSoft from station A. So when I press that reset push button, it sends it over the Flexi link to the other stations. Likewise here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the e-stop information from station A to the other stations using FlexiLink. So I go to Outputs and I grab a bit of information. So this one's already been renamed and I've called that e-stop station A. Now I need to bring the e-stop status in from the other stations as well. So if I hit an e-stop on station B on machine 2, or if I hit an e-stop on station C, which represents machine 3, or machine 4, then I want the system to, to trip as well. So I'm bringing those bits in. Now what we can do is we can go up and hit the simulate button just to make sure this is going to work OK. We'll click on the play button. There's the e-stop on station B, C and D OK. My local light cut is OK. My local e-stop is OK. Now, I press the reset push button and the motor runs and if I hit my local e-stop the motor stops but I also drop the bit on the FE station A so that would be sending a signal to the other other machines. If I break my local light curtain the motor stops but the e-stop stays healthy so I'm just stopping the local machine there with the light curtain. So. Hopefully that is understandable. There's station B going off again. Stops the motor. So an e-stop was pressed on station B. And just press the reset and release and off we go again. So hopefully that's understandable. So um, what we'll do now is um, we will go and start writing the logic for station B. So for station B, um, we just come up to the top here and click on station B and go into the logic editor. There's the local e-stop from station B. I'll just make this page a bit bigger so that you can see it better. And I'm also going to bring in my dual channel switch. We'll then go to function blocks and bring in the reset block for this one as well. Again we're going to double click on the block and give it six inputs. So there's a lot of repetition at this at this point here, but uh, it's uh, it's just to get the system working as we expect it to work. So there's the E stop. There's the safety switch. And what we're going to do is go into station A. There's my E stop from station and my reset. So my reset is coming from station A. 
and my E stop is coming from station A. We're now going to go to station C, bring that one over onto release 2, and then we'll bring station D over. Oops, station D over, and attach that onto release 3. We'll then go to our function blocks because what I need to do is to send that E stop from station B onto the link. So I'll just attach that from there to there. Go to my outputs, outputs from the CPU, take the top one, drag it over and attach it onto output 1. I'll just do a right hand click on here and rename it and I'll keep the format the same for all of them so we'll call this e stop hyphen station B. And I also need to attach onto there my um, my local motor and the local lamp. So you can see that anything that's a, that's a yellow tinge to the tag is a safety tag. If it was a non-safe tag, it would be grey. And we can simulate this as well. Again, just making sure that it's working OK. So there's station B going good. The local gate, the status of the e-stops from the other machines. Press the reset, motor runs. So the, the only uh, thing with Flexi Link is that you can't simulate the entire link and um, you have to simulate each station individually and um, that may change in the future uh, but at the moment we can only do that so that's station uh, B logic we'll now go in and do station C logic and station C logic is pretty much exactly the same as station B the only difference that we have is that the tag names are slightly different so there's your e-stop, there's your safety gate, function block, we'll grab the, the reset block as before. See, once you get into the, the swing of things with this, it becomes quite simple from a configuration point of view. Obviously in a real machine, you'd be probably transferring a lot more data. So here's my E stop from station A again. I've then got the reset coming from station A. And what I'll be looking to do here is bring in the E stop from station B. And the E stop from station D. So you can see that the, the naming hasn't changed there because I haven't configured station D yet. That will happen at the end. You'll see it all. How it's all laid out. So there is my routing block again. You don't have to change it to one output. It just makes it a bit neater. Um, it'll still work fine that block if you've selected two outputs. And then we're sending the status there of station C. So we'll rename that and we'll call it E stop station C and say OK to that and then again we'll just attach on to the enable the local motor and also the reset required one so I'm hoping that this is all making sense so that's our logic done for that we've simulated station uh, A and B I don't think we need to simulate station C or D so um, we'll now do station D logic so on that one the only difference is that instead of having a safety switch now we've got a light curtain so I keep forgetting to make the page bigger but there we go so there's the e-stop there's the local light curtain this is hopefully becoming very familiar you can see it's just doing the same thing again and again and again just changing the tags 
But in, re in reality, whenever we've done any FlexiLink projects, it tends to just be e-stops and things like that that you're sending back. E-stops are certainly always sent backwards and forwards usually because you want it so that whenever an e-stop is pressed, that all the machines stop. Onto to station B, there's station B. And you will see here uh, that all the stations all line up. So you'll see station C will be e-stop station C because we've done it already. The tag name is, is copied over. I'll then just grab this routing block because we want to send the e-stop from station D onto the loop as well. Now one thing that you would probably do here that uh, I've not shown, just to try and speed things up a little bit, is on the left hand side there, um, I'll, I'll show you in a second, there's a little icon with a, a green uh, circle with a white plus, just to the left of the logic page and that's to add notes. So what you can do is you can add notes and, and describe exactly what you're doing here. And all of those notes are sent down to the system plug, so in the future when you come and look at this, you'll have an idea of what, was, what you're trying to do. So that will now change, there we go, to station D. I'll just very quickly simulate this. So there's the e-stop, the light curtain, all of the stations OK. Press the reset from station A, resets the motor. The local one knocks everything off and the link. Reset and off we go again. So the icon that I was um, talking about yeah, if we just jump back here to station A, you can see all the all the tag names have now been populated, so you know exactly what things are. And there's B, A, C, and D, and then on C, A, B, and D. So it's just a sanity check, just here, just checking, sure, making sure we've got all the tags correct for each station, and it all looks um, it all looks okay. And then when we go to the back to the overview page here, so. Um, so that is basically, that's us done the logic for the, the FlexiLink. So the next thing that we're going to look at is the reporting structure. So to get to the report, um, or before that, if you look at the FlexiLink process image, here is where you'd look at the process image for A, C and D, and you can see there's the, um, in byte zero, there's the e-stop. In byte zero for station B, there's your e-stop there. So you can see we've got many, many uh, more bits available to us that we could have used. Um, but that's just a, a good way of seeing the, the process image. If you click on report for station A, then what you'll do is you'll see the hardware, you'll get the part numbers. If you go down to general information, you'll get your CRC checksum and your configuration date. It also states there the 100 meters based on the baud rate is the maximum distance that you can go. If we keep coming down, there's your logic for station A and then keep scrolling down you'll get your wiring diagram and um, there's your process image as well there so there's your e-stop there and your resets on the far right hand side there keep coming down there's your e-stop and there it's showing you the test pulses so x1 through one contact to input one x2 through the second one into input two your reset supplied by 24 volts and your light cut and gives two semiconductor outputs and there's your local motor and lamp. And then down here it just gives you some information on the other uh, FlexiSoft stations. And that's the report for, uh, for station A. What you would do then is you would then, so you'd, you'd save that report, you'd then uh, go into station B and you would create the report for this one. So if you keep scrolling down, it's exactly the same. There's your logic for station B. And then you have your wiring diagram for that as well. Further down, again, the process image there. There's your wiring diagram. So your e-stop and safety switch are, are wired in with test pulses and your local outputs. And your other stations there. So what you would uh, end up doing, as I say, is you would have um, a report for each station. So if you were to come up here um, and click on the save icon that I'm just highlighting here, um, it'll create a PDF. So you'll have a PDF for station A, for station B, for station C and station D. And then that would uh, be saved and put into your project file for your, uh, your final solution.
So where to get more information on all of this? Um, well, the familiar place as always to go to is the SICK website. So where it says I am looking for there, simply type in FlexiLink and it will take you to an area of the website where you can download all the manuals and see how it's all done. Another great place to go is the YouTube channel. So if you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, just simply go to YouTube. In the search bar, type in Six Sensor Intelligence. It will take you to our uh, YouTube channel. And over on the right-hand side, if you've got a Google account, you can hit subscribe here. Um, and you can subscribe to the channel. And if you hit the bell icon here as well, you'll get an email notification whenever a new video is put up from Six. So everything um, is, is, is in there. It's not just safety um, videos, it's videos covering all of a product range. And it's not just about the products, it's about how those products are applied in industries and applications and things like that. So it's very, very useful to, to see where these products are uh, expected to be used. If you do have any additional questions after looking at the website and the YouTube channel, then and there's obviously uh, you can contact us direct and our uh, details will come up in the next slide. So future webinars, the webinars that have already taken place was an introduction to FlexiSoft. We've also looked at understanding function blocks in FlexiSoft Designer and the uh, last uh, one we did was in FlexiLoop. There are videos, uh, recorded videos um, of those and to get to those uh, just drop me an email and I will send you a link to the appropriate YouTube channel where, where those are. You've currently been watching webinar 4 which is related to Flexi Link, and the future webinars that are coming is configuring a Flexi Align project. So again Flexi Align and Link are quite similar uh, but different in, in their own ways so uh, Flexi Align will be the next webinar that we'll be doing. Webinar 6 is looking at diagnostics, so it's looking at the diagnostic cards within FlexiSoft and how we get data out of the FlexiSoft and up to the PLC and from the PLC back down into FlexiSoft as well. Uh, and diagnostics is one of the major elements really within FlexiSoft because we're trying to pinpoint where potential issues are um, and getting them fixed as quickly as possible. So therefore, as it says there, reducing downtime and increasing the productivity. Webinar 7 is the final webinar in the series and that will be looking at a robot palletizer application so we'll be taking it from the from bare nothing, just a robot and a, a conveyor belt system and putting a whole FlexiSoft solution together to, uh, to make it safe. As I said, if you've got any questions at all, my details are down at the bottom left there so it's Ian Keatley Smith, uh, with my email address there and my mobile telephone number and we have Martin Kidman there, his email and telephone number. So I tend to look after the south of the country, of the UK, um, and Martin looks after the north of the country, um, and between the two of us we look after Ireland as well. So um, if you have say, if you get any questions, please get in touch with us, and hopefully we'll be able to, to answer your questions. So that's the end of the webinar. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it useful and uh, I hope you have a good day. You take care. Cheers now. Bye.